when people first come here to stay for a period of meditation. It's important to keep the four frames of reference in mind as a way of getting the mind into seclusion. But it's also interesting to note that when the Buddha gave parting instructions to his monks, one of the themes was to stay with the four frames of reference. The teaching is the same, but it serves different functions when you're coming and when you're going. When you're coming, you come out of a place of being involved with other people. Physically, you're around other people, you're near them, you interact with them, and mentally you're entangled with them. When you come out to meditate, it's important that you not only come out for physical seclusion, but also for mental seclusion to start untangling some of those tangles in your mind. And the Buddha's recommendation is to just be with the body, be with feelings in and of themselves. In other words, instead of putting a lot of interpretation on the top, thinking about past, thinking about future, what you've left or where you're going after you leave here. You just sit here with what you've got. This is his interpretation of mental seclusion. As you're just being with the present moment, and you're not two with the past or two with the future. And usually it's not just two, it starts multiplying. Four, sixteen, two hundred fifty-six just keeps growing exponentially. All the entanglements you could create and carry around with you. But it's important to realize that you are creating them. It's an old habit, and they seem to be automatically there. But as you sit down in the present moment, you begin to realize how much you're actually creating them, how much you put them together. And so the first reminder is just to take them apart as much as you can. When you catch yourself putting things together like that, you just drop the whole project. There's a temptation to want to see a particular thought out to the end. It's like watching a TV show. You sit down for a few minutes and all of a sudden you feel you've committed to the next half hour, even though you know that nothing earth-shaking, nothing re re really worthwhile is going to happen in the TV show. And usually the ending is pretty predictable. But somehow you feel committed anyhow. It's the same with thought patterns in the mind. A thought pattern gets started, you start getting involved in it, and you feel you've got to see it all the way through. Well, you don't have to. After all, it's your choice. They're just constructs in the mind, so you can take them apart as you like. You get back simply to the sensation of the breathing right here, right now. How does it feel when you breathe in? How does it feel when you breathe out? We have certain preconceived notions about where the breath comes in, how it comes in, how it goes out. But allow yourself to put those aside and explore just the actual sensation of breathing, the immediate sensation. If you allow it to open your mind to open to different possibilities, where does it actually feel like the energy starts? Where does it feel like the energy stops? How do you know when the breath is long enough? How do you know when it's too long? How do you know when it's not long enough? Try to get in touch with these sensations in and of themselves. Give yourself something to explore. That's how you can maintain interest in the present. Don't think of it simply as tying the mind down with a leash to the breath. But give it a reason to want to stay. So even if there is a leash on it, you don't feel constrained by it, because there's something interesting here getting in touch with the energy flow in your body, seeing how it actually feels in and of itself. And this way you can cut off thoughts of past, thoughts of future, because you're making the body in and of itself your frame of reference. You don't look at the body in terms of how it fits into the world or how it fits into your world view. Just simply the sensations in and of themselves right here. 
without any other implications. And you find that as you do that, it's easier and easier to cut off the distractions as you get more and more absorbed in exploring this process of breathing here in the present moment. And when you breathe in, how does it feel in different parts of the body? Not just the nose, not just the chest. And explore the different parts of your body, and you begin to see that there's different sensations for the in-breaths, different sensations for the out-breaths. Even in parts of the body you might not expect. So it's only through this anchor of your physical sensation of the present moment that's going to keep you from wandering off. Otherwise the mind is like a balloon. If it doesn't have something to hold it down, it just goes where the wind will blow it. And who knows where it's going to come down. So use these present sensations as an anchor. for developing seclusion, for developing that old, taking the physical seclusion you've got here and adding mental seclusion on top. Now when you leave here, you want to take that seclusion with you. You go back to being entangled with other people, involved with other people, but you want to maintain this inner sense of seclusion. you learn to realize that physical seclusion doesn't need to mean mental, mental excuse me, physical entanglement doesn't need to mean mental entanglement. You know, carry the carry the wilderness back with you into society. Because when there's entanglement, there's also going to be separation. And the Buddha has pointed this out many, many times. I will go different, separate from all that is dear and appealing to me. And how do we protect ourselves from the grief that can come from that? Well, as the Buddha said, you take yourself as your refuge. You take the Dharma as your refuge. And the Dharma here can also mean not only the Buddha's teachings, but Dharma in the sense of mental qualities. Learning how to look at the events in the mind simply, simply as that, simply as mental events in and of themselves. They come and they go. And you watch their coming and you watch their going from this anchored position, being with the breath, being with the body. And at some point in the practice, it's got to hit you. What kind of happiness are you going to find in these different mental states? They come and they go. Things that come can go and the happiness that you create out of them. It's based on a very unstable foundation. So again, you want to strip things down to their basic elements. That's why you stay with body in and of itself, feelings in and of themselves, mind in and of itself, mental qualities in and of themselves, the events that come and go in the mind. Keep them at that level. Because if you start building things out of them, you just build relationships. And it's possible to have you know, actual relationships with other people, but not to have your hopes for happiness dependent on those relationships. But you learn how, have to learn how to deconstruct all the constructs your mind creates around them. And you do that by looking at the mental states that come and go in the mind, simply as that, simply as mental states, without looking into their meaning, without getting involved in the story the narrative. And this has a solvent, solvent effect on a lot of the constructs we create. It helps us keep in mind the fact that they are constructs, and because they're constructed, they're going to come crashing down someday. So you try to keep yourself as close as possible to the basic elements. Because the more you start constructing stories out of them, the more you start taking other things as your frame of reference, 
the more you're setting yourself up for a fall. And then you can start to look more and more closely at what are these basic elements that you're constructing things out of. And you begin to realize that there's nothing at all that you could make out of them that could be lasting. It's like building a house out of frozen meat. It's hard enough to get the house constructed, but you realize that as soon as it reaches the heat of a normal day, the whole thing is going to come collapsing down. And it's at this point, the Buddha says, that you incline your mind to the deathless. That even the raw materials, staying as close as possible to the raw materials, that's no guarantee of true happiness either. It's a safer position than allowing yourself to create all sorts of elaborate Rube, Rube Goldberg constructions. But still, it's not totally safe. Total safe safety comes with when the, inclining the mind to the deathless, opening up to the deathless. And that can happen only when you're really good at deconstructing things in the mind, keeping things at their most basic. Sensations in and of themselves, feelings in and of themselves. Mind states, mind mental events in and of themselves. This is called taking the Dharma as your refuge, or taking mental qualities as your refuge. In other words, keeping things in their deconstructed state as much as possible. There's refuge there. So you don't get crushed by them as you try to create all kinds of fancy domes and arches and seven-story buildings. If the bricks are on the ground, they're not going to fall on you. And when you see it clearly that they are just bricks, then you say, there must be something better than this. And that's what opens you up to your true refuge. And I can sense the Dharma here being nirvana, the deathless, the unconditioned. That's the ultimate refuge. So the Buddha's greeting when you begin to meditate is, stay with the frames of reference. When you leave, when you part, again, the instruction is, stay with the four frames of reference. That's your safety, that's your protection as you go through the world. In other words, you don't take the world as your frame of reference. You stay on this level as much as you can. That, he says, is an island. The word island here is part of a much larger simile where he talks about the floods in the mind, the floods of sensual passion, the floods of views, the floods of states of becoming, of ignorance. These things come flowing out of the mind. And if you don't have an island, you drown. So it's by staying with these four frames of reference that you create an island for yourself. That the flood waters will not overcome. So keep this in mind as you come and as you go. This is the way you take the seclusion of the monastery and carry it back with you into the world. In other words, you take the causes for seclusion, the skills that help create that sense of seclusion. That's what you can take back. You can't take the atmosphere of the monastery back with you. But you can take these skills that create that inner seclusion, which is the important one. <laughs>